In this video, we're going to go through a summary of consequentialist ethics, one of the main ethical theories that we use in healthcare ethics. But firstly, we want to look at what the term ethics means itself. So ethics can be defined as uh, systematizing, defending, recommending concepts of right or wrong behavior. So what that means is that any ethical theory needs to tell us what the right or wrong action is in moral terms, and then to provide a justification as to why this is the case. So the three main ethical theories we use are consequentialist ethics, non-consequentialist ethics, which is also known as deontology, and virtue ethics. So as I've mentioned, we're going to look in a bit more detail about consequentialist ethics today. Consequentialist ethics essentially claims that what is right or wrong depends on the consequences that that action brings about. So any consequentialist theory has to give an account or justify what it is about the consequences of an action, that makes it morally right or wrong. It then has to give us a way to rank these options, uh, all these actions, in relation to one another, and tell us which one is the right one amongst those set of options. The most famous type of consequentialist ethics is utilitarianism, which was first proposed by the philosopher Jeremy Bentham, and then furthered by his student John Stuart Mill. Now, utilitarians say that what is desirable is happiness, and that the morally right action is the one that produces the great amount of happiness, or conversely, the least amount of pain. That's not the most overall happiness for the moral agent, or the person making the decision, but the greatest amount of happiness overall. So let's now look at an example of utilitarianism, and I think that will help us illustrate what we've discussed so far. So if we look at this slide, we can see three actions here, action one, action two, and action three. Now let's imagine that these are all potential actions that we can take in relation to some moral dilemma. Now if we look at action 1, we can see that it produces 20 arbitrary units of happiness and 10 units of pain. So on balance, it produces 10 units of happiness overall. Action 2 produces 15 units of happiness and 0 units of pain. So overall, it produces 15 units of happiness. Finally, action 3 produces 10 units of happiness and 5 units of pain. So overall, it produces 10 units of happiness. According to utilitarianism, the right action is action 2, as on balance, it produces the greatest amount of overall happiness. A real-life example could be deciding ventilator allocation. Imagine we have one ventilator left at a hospital and two patients who require it. One is an otherwise fit and healthy young woman, and the other an elderly lady. Utilitarianism would advocate giving the ventilator to the young woman as overall it would produce the greatest amount of happiness, all things being equal. So far we have seen that utilitarianism can be quite a useful tool and an objective way of deciding the right and wrong action in moral terms. And now I want to turn our attention to some well-known objections of utilitarianism. Firstly, many critics claim that it's difficult to calculate how much happiness is produced in most circumstances. Furthermore, when an ethical dilemma arises in practice, we often do not have the time nor sufficient information to make an accurate assessment of this. The second objection to utilitarianism that we'll look at is that in certain circumstances, it advocates what appears the morally incorrect outcome and that it can even advocate sacrificing innocent people's lives to generate the greatest amount of happiness. We can demonstrate this using John Harris's famous survival lottery thought experiment. Let's imagine that there are five patients on a hospital ward, all of whom require an organ transplant. One requires a liver, two a kidney, one requires a heart, and the other lungs. On the next ward, a patient comes in with a mild cold and just for an examination. This patient happens to be a compatible donor for the other patients who will die within the next 24 hours if they do not receive the organ donation. Utilitarianism would claim that, in this case, the action that would produce the greatest amount of happiness overall is killing the patient who is in for their examination and harvesting their organs for the sake of saving the lives of the other five patients who require the organ donation. Clearly this feels like intuitively the wrong result. In this case, we can in no way support the killing of this innocent person, even if it is for the sake of saving the other five patients. 
and even if it produces the greatest amount of happiness overall. So what this thought experiment shows us is that simply trying to generate the greatest amount of happiness overall does not always result in the morally right action being taken. The final criticism of utilitarianism, which we will address in this video, is based on the work of philosopher Robert Nozick and his experience machine thought experiment. Nozick asks us to imagine that a machine has been invented which can plug into our brains and create a simulated reality. Once plugged into the machine, it will generate a simulation which is filled with only happy experiences. The utilitarian would advocate plugging into this machine as this decision will lead to the most happiness being generated overall. However, Nozick believes that most of us, given the choice, would not plug into the machine regardless of the amount of happiness produced. He states this is owing to three reasons. Firstly, we want to have the authentic experience of doing things and not just a simulated experience of doing so. Secondly, he claims that what we want is to be a particular sort of person and not just simply a body plugged into a machine. Finally, whilst being plugged into the machine, he claims that we are limited to a computer simulated reality and a set of experiences which do not appeal to our deeper sense of reality. So, in summary, consequentialist ethics claims that what is right or wrong is dependent on the consequences that action produces. The most famous form of consequentialist ethics, utilitarianism, states that the morally right action is the one that produces the greatest amount of happiness overall. Whilst this seems intuitively a good way of determining the morally right or wrong action, it isn't without fault. Firstly, as we saw, some critics claim that it commits us to a moral calculus to try to figure out how much happiness or utility is created in each action. Secondly, it can advocate the sacrificing of innocent individuals, as we saw in the case of John Harris's survival lottery thought experiment. And finally, Nozick showed us using his experience machine thought experiment that we desire more than just happiness and we want to have authentic experiences. For more information on healthcare ethics, check out our website and make sure to follow us on our social media platforms, which are in the description below.